Hello everyone. Back again with film recaps. In this video, I'm going to recap one of the horror thriller films from 2020, titled The Night House. Before we get to the storyline, I'd like to wish everyone a happy and great day. Without further ado, let's get straight to the storyline. The film opens with a woman coming home to an empty house by the lake, a home that she used to share with her now deceased husband, Owen. She spends the night drinking and reminiscing memories about her late husband. Watching footage from her and Owen's wedding day brings back fond memories of their time together. At night, she lies awake, not used to sleeping alone, and the empty space next to her keeps her awake. But all of the sudden, she hears a series of knocks. The woman decides to go downstairs to check it out, but doesn't see anyone around. Even creepier, when she turns around, a silhouette of a man can be seen on the glass door. In the morning, she finds herself waking up at her husband's office, and when she walks to her car outside to go to school, she hears the dock staircase's gate squeaking. She fixes the squeaky gate, right when she sees a series of muddy footprints that stem from the edge of the dock, as if someone stepped up from the boat and started walking along the dock. As she tries to process the information, she hears a gunshot coming from the woods, reliving her trauma as her husband took his own life with a gun. Beth works as a teacher, and after school ends that day, she spends her time browsing for a new house to buy. A parent of one of her students comes to interrupt, demanding a grade and asking why her son got a C in Spanish. Still grieving over her husband's death, Beth ends up oversharing about how just last Thursday, her husband took the boat out and shot himself in the head. This baffles the parent, and prompts her to excuse herself. When Beth comes home, her neighbor, Mel, comes over to check up on her, and while they converse, she notices that the muddy footprints are gone from the dock. Weirded out, she decides to ask Mel if he was shooting that morning, but he says no, and didn't even hear a gunshot being fired at all this morning. Later that evening, she collects the videotapes, and carelessly dumps them into the box, and everything that reminds her of Owen. The widow decides to spend time at her husband's office, where he kept a book containing floor plans he drew. However, as she went through the pages, she started noticing strange, maze-like patterns Owen drew, and a note, that says trick it, don't listen to it. Beth then reaches the house's illustration and a reversed version. She turns the page to see the first floor plan as our house, and the reverse floor plan on the adjacent drawing. Exhausted, Beth ignores it and goes to bed, until she gets woken up by the sound of the speakers downstairs blasting music. During the frightful event, she suddenly receives text messages from her dead husband Owen, asking her to come down. Scared, she decides to call his number, and strangely, Somebody picks up and she faintly hears Owen's voice telling her to look out the window. When she does, she sees her husband in his birthday suit, standing over water. And the next thing she knows, Beth strangely wakes up on the bathroom floor. She double checks her phone to see if there were indeed new messages from her husband last night, but there aren't any. Despite this, curiosity overtakes her, so she enters her car, where she keeps a box of her husband's things, and checks his phone. But of course, there's no new texts being sent. Afterwards, she decides to browse through pictures in his phone, where she strangely finds a picture of a woman who looks like her. She tries confiding in her best friend, Claire, since she knows for a fact that the woman in the picture isn't her, because she doesn't have a shirt that looks like that. Claire, however, merely convinces her to not overthink this because the woman in the picture looks exactly like her. To cheer her up, Claire asks her to come hang out at the bar with her friends. Unfortunately, the hangout ends up being really awkward, as Beth brings up about how she thinks there is a ghost in her house, and how she recently started sleepwalking ever since her husband died. Apparently, her husband used to sleepwalk when he was alive, but Beth never did. As a cherry on top, Beth takes out the suicide note Owen left her, and reads it out loud in front of her friends. The message is really cryptic, it says, you were right, there is nothing, nothing is after you, you're safe now. Not wanting things to get even more awkward, Claire cuts the hangout short, and takes Beth home. Once they arrive, Beth confesses that she knows what the suicide message means, because when she was 17, she got into a car crash and died for a solid 4 minutes. She experienced how there was nothing after death, and for the longest time, Owen didn't want to believe her on that. But based on the suicide note, it seems that Owen finally agreed with her during the last moments of his life. Out of sympathy, Claire stays with her until she goes to sleep. But suddenly, Beth gets woken up way later that night by very loud music yet again blasting through the house speakers. She is alone now, 
and faintly hears Owen's voice whispering for her to open the front door. When she does as asked, she witnesses several frightened women fleeing through the woods, and when Beth follows them, she sees two women jumping into the lake, followed by a third one. Oddly enough, she sees light coming from a house on the other side of the lake, followed by her husband's voice telling her to get in the boat. She approaches said boat, but upon seeing that it's covered in his blood, she turns around. But it's not over, she sees bloody footprints on the dock, and hears the sound of water bubbling. Speaking to thin air, she asks if Owen is there, and sees bloody footprints walking up to her. When she tries reaching for him, she gets knocked backwards. And the next thing she knows, she gets transported on the boat, and wakes up in the middle of the lake. She then walks back up to her house, but here she discovers a reversed copy of her house. And once again, she oddly sees other women who look like her in the house's different rooms, and Owen too. He suddenly strangles her, prompting the woman to leave. As Beth approaches and opens the front door, she sees herself laying on the couch, which results in her waking up on the couch with the door open. Seeing that this is beyond trippy, she goes through the pictures on Owen's cloud, and finds a series of pictures of other women who look similar to her, meaning that Owen may have had affairs. To process her experience, she walks all the way across the lake, hoping to find the reversed house on the other side of the lake that she saw last night. During the search, she comes across her neighbor Mel, who confusedly tells her that there can't be a house out here, because no one is permitted to build on the county land. Beth resumes on her hike, until she finds a scratch mark on a tree and decides to explore it. Unexpectedly, she discovers a run-down house that looks similar to her house, and enters it. When she climbs upstairs, she finds a morbid sculpture of a woman getting impaled. After this discovery, she heads to Mel's, asking if he knows anything about this. Mel swears that he doesn't know there's a house out there, but he did see Owen venture through the woods at night one time, accompanied by a lady who kind of looked like Beth. And not long after that, Owen showed up at Mel's house, and confided that he had shameful urges he was trying to get rid of. Assuming that Owen was talking about an affair, Mel didn't ask him to elaborate, and never told this to Beth. He apologizes for keeping this a secret, and tells Beth to try focusing on positive things from now on. But of course it's not that simple. Once Beth gets home, she ransacks through Owen's things, until she stumbles upon a book about the occult. In between the pages, she also finds pictures of the morbid sculpture similar to Owen's, and mentions of dark forces. She tries tracking down the bookstore from which the book was from. And in the process, she knocks away the sculpture out of frustration, but it still stands. Here is when she suddenly hears a series of footsteps coming from the other room, and decides to explore it while carrying a bottle of liquor. In the storage room, she witnesses a man's figure forms through the pillar. <gasps> Feeling the need to see this through, Beth visits the occult bookstore, and asks the employee if they keep any sort of records of purchase, but they don't. And just so happens, she sees one of the women from the pictures in Owen's phone, and decides to say hi to her. As it turns out, the woman works there, and claims that Owen used to come to the bookstore several times a year. She admits going out on a date with Owen, but never sleeping with him and barely knowing him as a person. Beth believes her, and is now confused about what the hell Owen was up to before his death. She tries telling her best friend about everything she just learned, but Claire yet again tries to convince her to move on with her life. Beth tries to listen this time, and decides to pack up and stay at a hotel for a couple of nights. But when she's about to head, the woman from the bookstore shows up at her door, and the two sit down for a chat. Here she finally confesses to Beth that Owen took her to the house once, and even showed her the other house in the woods. There, he proceeded to show her the sculpture and they ended up kissing, until he started choking her and she asked him to stop. Afterwards, he apologized and took her home, all the while telling her that he needed to get rid of his urges, and therefore he needed to end it. After finishing the story, the woman drives away, while at this point, Beth's curiosity has gone through the roof, and she goes to the rundown house in the woods again. Inside the house, she speaks to thin air, begging for Owen to speak to her. As she steps through the rotted floorboards, one collapses. When she looks underneath the structure, she finds a series of dead bodies wrapped in tarp hidden in it. This shakes Beth to the core as they might be the corpses of women in her dreams, and prompts her to run back to the house. She tries to call her best friend Claire, but she doesn't pick up. And so, Beth leaves a message, saying that she found something horrific in the rundown house. Afterwards, she takes a shower, 
until the speakers start blasting again out of nowhere, and she goes to check it out. When she steps closer, it dies immediately. Beth then calls Owen's name, breaking down in tears, because she misses him and wants to speak to him again. The next time she looks up, she sees a writing on the fogged up mirror, that says here. As she enters the bathroom, she notices a pair of wet footsteps by the door and reaches out to thin air. Surprisingly, she could feel him and goes to embrace him, while he embraces her back despite being invisible. But when she calls Owen's name, the invisible figure says that he is not Owen, which prompts Beth to snap out of it. She attempts to exit the room, but the door shuts abruptly. The next time she looks in the mirror, she sees the reflection of another woman who looks terrified, and sees a scene play out, in it, Owen murders the woman in cold blood. Meanwhile in real life, Beth eventually feels herself getting choked as well, and when she hazily opens her eyes, the door is open, allowing her to step into the bedroom. Here she finds everything in reverse, and sees a couple of women hiding around the room, right before Owen enters while dragging a woman's dead body. In the corner, Beth sees a silhouette of a man who turns to her direction. Scared, she heads downstairs, and is welcomed with another trippy scene, this time of Owen making love to another woman. Meanwhile, the silhouette lingers in the corner of the room, until she faces it up front. Beth eventually gets dragged by the invisible figure, while seeing visions of Owen killing other women. She also sees Owen crying beside a bloodied corpse, right when she ends up being tossed downstairs. In the room, the widow sees a view of Owen's doppelganger sitting in front of a fireplace, with Beth sleeping in his lap. The doppelganger then says that he is not Owen, revealing that he is what Beth saw when she nearly died in the car accident, and identifying himself as nothing. Ever since then, it follows her. He explains that he tried to convince Owen to kill Beth to bring her back to the afterlife, but the husband resisted. Instead, Owen built the reverse house and murdered the Beth lookalikes to try to trick nothing, but nothing realized the trick. The widow, who's sleeping on the doppelganger's lap, wakes up, only to realize that it was all a dream. When Beth attempts run out of the house, nothing grabs her and starts choking her, sending her floating in the air. He twists her body into the same position as the morbid sculpture, until Beth eventually passes out. The next morning, Claire pays the house a visit, looking for Beth but doesn't find her. Meanwhile, Beth is floating in between the afterlife, she is on a boat with nothing, who is still taking the shape of Owen. Back in real life, Claire discovers the gun Owen used to kill himself is gone, so she rushes out to the dock. She finally finds Beth unconscious on the boat, and starts yelling her name, getting Mel's attention. Claire and Mel are running to Beth's rescue, begging her to snap out of it. For the widow, she only sees nothing in Owen's body, who feeds her with lies about nothing in life matters anymore and tells her to kill herself. Here Beth ultimately decides to put the gun down, and not commit suicide. As soon as she moves the gun away from herself, Beth returns to the real world, where Claire is swimming toward the boat to save her. Claire removes the gun from her, and takes her in the water with her. Mel brought the two to safety, and Claire embraces her best friend, glad that she is safe and sound. Once ashore, Beth sees the outline of the entity in the boat. Mel asks her what she is staring at and says, there's nothing there, to which Beth replies, I know. Okay guys, that's all the recap of the Night House 2020. Thanks for watching. See you again in the next video.